Welcome friends to another r slash I don't work your lady video. Today we've got some great stories and our first one's from Jedi Bo, Jedi Prime 29. I tried to sell Karen my crap at a ridiculous price at a Toys R Us. If you couldn't tell from the title, this one is freaking weird. And if you recognize my profile picture, you know I'm usually self-controlled. Anxiety is a strong motivator, but in this one I was in a freak everything mood after a long day, so yeah. Even though I really just wanted to bop to my music, I also like helping people. Especially people who don't understand Funko or Lego or comics. It's something I've always been good at. Even some teachers in high school would ask around Christmas time for insights on what the freak their kids were asking for. And it wasn't teacher's pet, because these weren't my teachers, but others in the school who my teachers would talk to. So yeah, just some context first. Now this was last year on a Saturday, around 2pm as I just left work after having an early morning shift and it was close to Christmas time. As I stood in the Funko aisle, this lady looked desperately confused. She had her kid telling her different things and she had no clue. I asked if she wanted help and helped her out then left. I went back after assisting some other parents in the Lego department when I heard that humph of a Karen. Excuse me, I knew she was talking to me because there was no one around. Um, hello, I need help right now. The all classic, I don't work here lady and I don't appreciate being spoken to as if I'm dumb. I would never speak to you or anyone like this. Karen grumbles, sorry. Nicer now, but I knew she couldn't hold it in for long and I helped her because I'd probably enjoy the future outcome and I did. She says, I was looking for such and such figure. It was a Harry Potter variant and I remember it was a $20 figure. I say, ah, yeah, that's probably going to be 20 bucks since it's an exclusive. There's another non-exclusive one here showing her, but yeah. Karen laughs slash scoffs. No, I wanted to know the price of this one. This one, see here? Slow for some reason, I don't know. I say 20 bucks, that's so much it costs. Karen with an angrier scoff and laugh says, no, she really lost it. I want the store's price, not yours. I don't want to buy your crap. I finally understood and laughed out loud. At this point, a store employee made it over, and she gave me the nod to sneak out of Karen's tantrum. I couldn't escape, though, because when the lady told her the store's price and pointed to the tag, she was fuming like smog. Karen to Karen in that smog voice, I am entitled, I am privileged. Karen to the employee, who was the manager, said, No, no, this is his price tag. This employee wanted to sell me his crap, like this is a shifty pawn shop or something. The manager to me said, what's your take? Me trying not to laugh said, no, I assisted some people needing help as I generally like to help people. And then she approached. I told her the price and differences between figures and she thought I was trying to sell her this figure. But I'm not, I don't even really know Gandalf. He wasn't in Harry Potter. The figure was Harry Potter as a variant. I know Lord of the Rings slash The Hobbit, not Harry Potter, just some extra fun. Karen glared at me like she wanted to Thanos dust me. The manager said, hmm, do you have the figure on you? May I search your bag? I was fine with that. Karen then entered with, no, he's right here, pointing to the figure on the shelf. The manager says, Karen, he's correct, as I overheard you shouting at him. This is the store price, not his, and another thing, some people are just trying to be nice and help. With me happily laughing quietly, Karen apologizes to the manager, not to me, but I don't care because the best is yet to come. The Karen grabs the figure and walks away. The manager pulls me aside and we quickly talk. The manager says, I see you come in here a lot and help folks. We all really appreciate it a lot. A lot of us don't even know this stuff, but I want to know, why interact with her? For what reason? I explained that it wasn't the first time I'd run into Karen, as she and I both frequent that strip mall where the store's located. I've witnessed her crap talk employees here at basically every other store in that area. I also explained that I take pacifist values, but to a point, and I hate bullies. When I now see Karen's, my Grinch smile takes over. I went to the grocer to possibly have another encounter of the Karen kind. I was ready for a blow up, a how dare you speak to your elders this way. I will clarify that she was in no way an elder. She looked late 20s, early 30s, and I'm early 20s. I didn't see her, but she did. She followed me into the dollar store and then proceeded to follow me saying Funko liar over and over again. 
I was snickering through the whole store. Every time I crossed into another aisle, she hit around the corner and kept saying, Funko liar, liar, liar. And at this point, people are taking notice and my shoulders are bouncing. Karen sees this and realizes something. She spent 45 freaking minutes following me around calling me a Funko liar. Everyone, including the employees she has belittled before, could see her. I had noticed and was laughing at it all. Karen pops off. I'll admit, the Harry Potter comment was a tad rude, but this is where it came together. The manager of the dollar store walked over to her after noticing her and said, Miss, you're the one who's belittled my employees time and time again, and now you yell at a customer? You need to leave now. The wild Karen saw I was giggling like a school child and stormed out. I've never seen her again. The manager of the dollar store was a fluke. I guess she would chew me out in the grocer, but never in a million billion years would I have guessed this event. The manager at the dollar store then turned her attention to me, the giggling toddler. They said, are you okay? Seems like a new reaction to a witch screaming match. I quickly explained what had went down, and the dollar store staff and manager were rolling. Apparently, they've been meaning to ban her for a bit, but she hadn't come in. I still go there, see the staff, and she hasn't been back. And like, I get upset sometimes over mispronunciations of characters or mix-ups, but oh my lord. I wish I stood up to all Karens. She just caught me at a freak everything moment. If somebody's acting snooty, stuck up, entitled in a store like this, is it okay to poke fun at them, humiliate them, maybe try to agitate them a little bit in return? Or should you try to just be the bigger person, try to get them dealt with and get them out of the store, or just ignore them? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. By the way, if you're enjoying these stories, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below so you never miss any of my daily videos. Every single video's got great stories, like our next one from Drum Ranger, an MLB baseball camp and entitled mother. Alright, this happened when I was 14. I was volunteering at a baseball camp run by an MLB team in my state. The coaches, of which I was one, wore jerseys that admittedly looked almost exactly like the ones the real team wears even down to the fabric and baseball pants with belts and everything that makes us look like actual members of the team. The actual camp lasts for five days. For four, we're at a minor league stadium in the host county, and for one, we traveled to the MLB stadium for a tour and to meet a player. We went to the team's ballpark and were unloading the buses. I was stuck with the youngest kids, ages four to six. A mother and her son, I'd say six, came up to me. The mother said, what is this? I said, oh, this is a baseball academy the MLB team here is running. The mother says, well, why are you here and not practicing? I say, well, ma'am, part of the camp is to let the kids have a tour of the stadium here and meet a member of insert team name here. The mother says, no, I don't think so. I think these children are kids of the insert team name here players. I want you to take my child with you and let him meet his favorite player. Now, which of these ingrates are the player's child? You'll introduce my child to them so he can meet the player. I say, miss, I can't do that as this is a baseball camp. We're only meeting one player and we don't know who that is yet. The mother says, so it might be insert player name here? I say, I guess, but I doubt it. They never really have the big names do this. The mother says, take my kid with you. You clearly run the camp. I say, no ma'am, I'm a team leader. They say, no, I know the camp. They don't let adults be team leaders. You're lying. Now, just so you know, I've always been very big for my age. At the time, I was 5'10 and 180 pounds, and even though I don't like bragging, I feel obligated to mention I was relatively muscular. I also act very mature for my age, for reasons that I don't like to talk about, so I appeared to her to be an adult. I say, well, I guess it's a good thing I'm not an adult. The mother, now getting agitated, said, You're lying. You're at least 21. That water bottle probably has beer in it. Okay, now I've seen pictures of myself at 14, and I definitely don't look 21. I said, Ma'am, I'm only 14. I won't be letting your child join us, as these children's parents have paid good money for them to have this experience. I will not be letting your child have the same experience for free simply because you're too dense to understand what I'm telling you in clear English. The camp charges $500 and she did speak English perfectly so don't bother justifying her with that. Anyways, I brought the camp leader over to explain it to her as I was worried she would do the normal Karen thing and act like I hit her. We went inside and the kids had a great time. 
When we came out, guess who was waiting? That's right, Karen was back and with her husband, who was my height but was comparatively a twig. He said I'd threatened his wife. He told me to pay for the therapy she would need for that or he'd make me pay. I didn't have the energy for this so I asked my friend, another coach there, to help the kids on board so I could get away from this. He knew what was up and was happy to as he had nothing else to do. Still not done, people. The next day at camp, she was there waiting for me. She had tracked me down to this camp I worked at as we wear name tags and I have a unique name. She called the man that runs everything and asked which one I worked at, saying that I'd worked at another with her child and that he'd taken a liking to me and wanted to say hi. At this point, I went to security and the minor league stadium and told them what was happening. She was banned from the minor league stadium and her child was banned for the camp for what she did. I don't blame OP for getting them banned and frankly it sucks for the kid but you can't have your own mom walking around terrorizing people like that. And our final story of the day is by Functional Psychopath. I don't work here but now you get to come to my work. I'm a correctional officer and work nights. After work, I normally just go home and sleep to get ready for my next 12 hour shift. However, on my off days, I take the time to do chores and housework. On this day, I didn't have the night off, so I had to do what I could get done before going to bed. So I went home and picked up my wife and kiddos to go grocery shopping. We get to the store and start doing the usual. A lady comes up to me and my family and starts asking for directions to items. Some I know, some I don't, so I tell her where the things I know are and apologize for the things I don't. Now, mind you, I'm in full uniform, taser cross draw, cuffs on each hip, fogger on the left thigh, spray and all the other items I use at work. On top of all that, I smell of peppers, sweat, mold and rust as the facility I work at is old and moist. She seems upset but walks away. We continue shopping and after a while we meet up with the lady and she spots us and comes down but at this time she's pissed. She starts screaming that I'm the worst employee ever and I should be fired for not helping. She continues on about how I should be catching shoplifters or back watching the cameras instead of flirting with this who are. Yay, she's one of those. I interrupt her rant and say the usual words of I don't work here. She of course fails to hear them as is the usual on the sub and continues her rant yelling and screaming that she picked me to help her because I'm the asset protection and should know where everything is. I ask my wife to take the kids and find a manager for this Karen. Lady, from now on known as Karen, is none too pleased to hear her secret identity ousted and increases her volume. I try to explain to Karen that I'm a jailer, not loss prevention at a grocery store. I tell her to go pound sand and find someone that actually works here. I then turn my back and start to walk away when I'm nailed in the back of the head and fall forward in a full face plant. I'm hurting, dazed, and can feel glass all around me. I roll onto my back and feel around. It's pasta sauce. This crazy just brained me with pasta sauce while she's still yelling and screaming and raising another jar to throw. I grab my taser, aim, and pop. Down she goes. Hard I get up, stumble over, flip her around, and cuff her. She's out like a light. My guess is the fall. I then sit back down and take an inventory of myself. I'm bleeding pretty bad from my head but seem to be alright. My wife, customers, and management show up as I'm checking over Karen. I pull my trauma kit off the back of my belt to get the smelling salts. I tell them to call 911 and continue checking on Karen. She's awake, dazed, and blissfully quiet. The rest goes as expected. The police arrive, question me, question her, watch the cameras, and I refuse medical treatment but do press charges. As my wife is a boss bud witch, I say that with reverence, she's medically trained and will take good care of me. I go home and she asked if I wanted staples or glue. I chose glue. She glues my head and we take a shower, go to sleep, and she wakes me up from time to time which I know isn't the best idea but hey, a few days later I'm writing this so I ended up alright. I get a call a couple hours before my shift ordering me to come in early to talk to Rank. Dreading this, I follow my orders and get up, shaved, showered, and dressed. I go in and have to explain the whole thing again and again. Then they show me the video from the store, though I did know she could throw far better than I could have dreamed. They ordered me not to wear my uniform outside of work and tell me I'll be working in booking tonight. 
I'm not very good at booking, but look forward to the training and activity of it, as the rest of the facility is slow and boring. Around 11pm rolls around, and who do I see being escorted into booking but Karen? I start to talk, but my sergeant taps me and shushes me. He talks to the deputy bringing her in, and they start doing the paperwork while I watch and try to learn as much as possible. She's charged with aggravated assault of a law enforcement officer and possession of meth. Who would have thought? Now Karen gets to live at my workplace. I don't get to work in the female zones, but the booking process was fun, though I wasn't allowed to do anything but watch. After she was booked, I'm told to report to another zone and end up finishing the night. Now for the past few days, pasta jokes have been in abundance, and her nickname is Pasta Lady. Her court date isn't for a while, and she's reportedly not getting along with other inmates and is in detox shoe. You mean to tell me this lady who's probably going through some form of withdrawal? The same lady who chucked a pasta jar at an officer's head? They're not getting along with other inmates? Absolutely shocking. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to see another I Don't Work Your Lady story that was even more insane than the ones in this video, click on the left video. Or, if you missed my latest video, click on the right. But with that said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.